I'm here today with John Carter Cash, son of Jim Carter Cash and Johnny Cash, to talk about his new book. He is an award-winning producer, musician. He's been uh, here before for some of his children's books. Mm -hmm. He's an author. A lot of different hats that, that you wear. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. Sometimes I wear different hats, for sure. You do. So yes. what, I, I guess I should just start before, mm -hmm. before getting into this, because we're, we're talking about um, legends. What, what was it mm -hmm. like to, to grow up and be the, the son of two legends? Well, my parents were really just good, uh, simple, hard-working people. And the greatness about them is evident, and it's undeniable. If if it but if they hadn't been such true you know salt of the earth people, I think that greatness would be harder to deal with. You know they had they uh, they never knew a stranger. Um, they were always there for family. You know first and foremost. So uh, you know there's a lot to my parents, but I got to travel the world. I got to see some wonderful things and meet presidents. You know whatnot and uh, you know had a great education out there on the road with them. But uh, but. But they were never too far away. It's a matter, you know, physically or in, in the matter of the heart either. I, I bet. Well, th this new book is is, is stunning. Um, House House of Cash: The Legacies mm -hmm. of My Father. And as as you um, put that together and think mm -hmm. about your father's legacies, what, what would you say is his greatest legacy? Well, Larry King asked my dad what he would like to most be remembered by, and his answer to Larry King on Larry King Live, Live was. Uh, I'd like to be remembered as a good father. So in my father's own words, his legacy, um, most important to him would have been that. And, and that he's very successful. I was going to ask that. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good thing. His, his, his music, of course, is an extended legacy that's out there for not only the family and the children, but it's for the whole world. So it's a far-reaching you know, legacy that's still there. But I think he has a legacy of spirit that's even beyond the music and his writing that... Uh, that is in the way that he treated people, the way that you know that he loved people, and uh, we we still remember that today. Those of us that were, that were close to him, but he was he was far more than just a you know the, than a singer and a songwriter and a performer. He was his creativity was leaps and bounds beyond that. He was he was a sketcher. He was a, a photographer. He was a uh, he was a cook. His you know there was a lot to my dad. And, and you can see a lot of yeah. that in here. You've certainly yeah. featured yeah. a lot of never released. Yeah. There's facsimiles of his handwriting all through this book. And, and yes, I wrote the text, but there's just as much of his handwriting. Uh, his pen is in here more than mine, probably. So, you know, he tells the story of his own life and his feelings and his own words in this book. Well, he's, he's known for so many great songs, mm -hmm. and, um, and there's so many of them. But when I'm, when I'm talking to you, the one I'm thinking of is a boy named Sue. Yeah, yeah. Having yeah. I hear read this, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he would bring you out on stage. He would, at the end of Boy Named Sue, he'd say, and, uh, and if I ever have a boy, well, I did have a boy, and here he is, John Carter Cash, and I'd take a bow. Boy, that, the audience, you know, the, the sound of the applause would rush over me, and, and it's pretty addictive. You can still feel that. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Of, of all your of all the songs, is there one that that sticks out for you? Do you still listen to the music in your car? Or are you still? So, well, uh, sometimes my kids do listen. I know we play the all the cash hits for them, but but I, my some of my favorite cash stuff is is the more obscure songs, things that he wrote back in the nineteen seventies. Things don't mm -hmm. people things people don't know as much. The Tiger Whitehead. These uh, anyway, some you know, which is a story song that that uh, is pretty obscure, but. I have to give 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 uh, kudos to the, his latter recordings because I was there when he made those recordings, uh, the latter compositions such as uh, the man comes around, or like the three oh nine, and uh, you know I was in the room when he did those recordings, so they stick with me. They really in a different do. way. Yeah, yeah, in a different way. So the man comes around is probably one of my favorites. Those of us who live in Nashville and who uh, visit the studios and are there when when you hear a recording, mm -hmm. you do have a different. Yeah. Sense of a, yeah. of a song as, yeah. as it's yeah. recorded. I, yeah, I yeah, definitely. So. Particularly for you as, as as the son. Yeah, I was I was there when he recorded "Hurt," and I actually sang the scratch vocal, which means that while the track was being recorded, the music itself, I sang the, the vocal, and then my dad went back in and and sang the uh, sang the, the final version after after we recorded the song. That's fascinating. Well, your dad also uh, he's known for having 
this this depth of experience, mm -hmm. this, this wide yeah. range of emotion that you can feel in his music. Oh, but yeah. he went through yeah. some dark days and and then yeah, had yeah, a, a spiritual that. awakening. And I know yeah. his family's uh, very close with the Graham family. Mm -hmm. What was that view of the spiritual awakening and, and that Christian faith? I, I never saw my father stray far from his faith, uh, from the spirit, and, and never stray from his faith. He he would always. Um, go back around to that being the center of his life and you know I, heard, I saw him uh, bounce decisions that he was making off of Billy Graham and quite a bit and he and Brett, Billy were good Christian brothers I, 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 uh, I devote a whole chapter to my father's philosophy mm -hmm. of faith in this book and, uh, and I just desc uh, described going to see Billy myself a couple of years ago sort of searching out what it was about their relationship that was so special and Billy said just that he said we're just good we were just good Christian brothers and and so that uh, but but yeah faith was you know was uh, the utmost important to my dad uh, importance to my father it's definitely a big part of, of, of the story well yeah. today everybody wants to claim johnny cash the yes. country music hall yes. of fame the rock and roll hall of fame yeah. the gospel hall of fame he would feel fine with them all claiming yeah, he, yeah, he would yeah, be yeah, comfortable yeah. in any yeah i think so yeah he would yeah he always was well, that's great well your your yeah. parents growing up your parents were really truly in love and oh yes you can you can yeah. feel that and and you you produced uh, i think you were the executive producer of walk the line walk is that the line. right yeah, yeah. Fabulous movie, uh, obviously mm -hmm. a worldwide hit. Yeah. What was that like to both be on the producing side, uh, on the professional side, mm -hmm. and also on the personal side, watching actors play your parents? Well, you know, I think that they did a wonderful job, you know, playing my parents. I've been getting in there and working in the script was a very interesting process. Working with the producers and the directors and trying to, you know, make sure that the story was was told as I believe my parents would have liked it told. Um, now the movie itself, it, I think it's a wonderful love story. And and if you look for certain things in my father's character, the depth of the character, the spirit, his you know his faith that we've been talking about, may be lacking. But boy, it tells a wonderful love story. So I'm happy in that. You know. Yeah. Well, I, I know your parent, your your mom in particular, from from reading some things that you've mm -hmm. written. It's very uh, sort of famous in this press on and, mm, and yes. this, this spirit of press on and. I know after she passed, your your dad was in the recording studio a few days yeah, later, and, yeah. and uh, you you talked about that need to press on. How has that helped define you? You've had success in, in different fields in music and producing and writing, and and you seem to be yeah. doing so many different things with all these hats that you wear. Has that been a big part of it? Yeah, it is. I mean, they're my watching my parents' their work ethic, work ethic and their persistence in life, uh, even in the face of adversary and pain, that they step up and they do. They go up to bat and they do what they need to do, um, you know. And and also, I mean, work or, or music, music in general specifically was was a great you know uh, therapy for my father, you know. And, and so, but but that's the probably the greatest life lesson that that my parents passed down to me was was that that you know I'm going to continue on even in the face of adversary. You know, when there's pain in my life and struggle, I must continue on, and I must do. I must put one foot in front of the other. And, you know, Dad never really stopped. He continued. Yeah, I think his body gave up. His spirit didn't. Yeah. Well, it, it's a it's a really beautiful book, um, filled with very personal stories in a way mm -hmm. that I think only you could tell that story. And uh, this is all, as well as both of your children's yeah. books, and I know you'll have another one coming out next year. Mm -hmm. um, are all all terrific. So. Um, Thank you. Yeah. One of your many hats, even even within the author realm, is children's author and adult author. Yeah, but this yes, is a yes. beautiful piece of work, and I think it's going to be enduring as a story to your father that he would also be proud of the legacy that you're you're continuing to write. So thank you yeah, for well, thanks for, for putting yes, this together. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.